there. Um, the other day I got a special letter from the Canadian Bible Society and I just was reminded of how the Canadian of how the Bible Society got started and I thought I wanted to share that with that story with you. And some of you may have a Bible and you, you may have even gotten it from, from the church and some of you may have more than one Bible and some of you may even have a case uh, on your Bible like I do and some of you may even have a special place for your for your Bible and but today I'd like to tell you the story of Mary Jones and her Bible the story of Mary Jones and her Bible Mary Jones lived in Wales which is right next to England and she lived with her parents on a little farm she worked hard to help her parents. She could not read or write, as most people there couldn't, and their nearest neighbors were one half of a mile away. The church was two miles away, and they would go every Sunday morning. Mary loved the singing and being with other children. The minister would preach for a long time, and then he would read out loud a book with squiggles. How could he make sense of those squiggles in the book, she wondered. One Sunday, the minister announced, a school will open in the village. A teacher will come for three months. Mary could hardly believe it. Not only would, would she learn to read, she would be able to see her friends every day as well. The first day, all the children, aged 6 to 13, came to the school set up in the church. They were all in one class because none of them could read. The teacher handed out slates and pieces of chalk, and they all learned how to draw letter shapes. Then Mr. Ellis, the teacher, wrote words on the board, and then sentences. As soon as a child could read the sentences, they could try to read from the only book, which was a Bible. Mary learned quickly and wanted a Bible of her own. She told her parents and that she would save up money to buy one. Her parents told her that books were very expensive. She was determined, though, and told them that even if she had to save up her money for 20 years, she would do it. The next Sunday... Mary was asked to read a passage from the Bible in church. When she sat down, her parents were very proud of her. A lady from church, Mrs. Evans, told Mary she could come and read her Bible at her house. Mary tried to remember everything she read so that she could tell her parents, and she went there whenever she had some spare time. Her father made a wooden box where she could put the money that she earned. Her parents gave her two chickens, and she could sell the eggs, and her father also gave her one hive of bees so that she could sell the honey. She was very thankful and said, I will work and work until I get a Bible. And that is exactly what she did. Mary knit brightly colored socks and sold them. At harvest time, Mary worked on a field nearby. It was exhausting work, and she only got a few pennies a day. But the pile of coins seemed to grow slowly in her box. Sometimes she was tempted to give up and buy a party dress or new shoes, but she reminded herself that every penny bought, brought her closer to owning a Bible. Six years passed. Six years of saving she was now 15 years old, and she was still determined to buy a Bible. She needed only a little bit more. On Sunday, when she asked the minister where she would have to go to buy a Bible, he handed her a little bag of coins that the villagers had collected for her. She knew that they didn't have much extra money, so she was very thankful. Now she had enough money. The minister told her the nearest place to buy a Bible was Bala, 
which was 25 miles away, 13 times as far as the village from her house. Mary told him that she was used to walking. So early the next morning, she started off. In her hand, Mary held a knotted cloth full of bread and cheese to eat along the way. In her pocket was the money she had saved. Over her shoulder hung a leather bag which she had sewn to bring her precious Bible in. In her head, she carried a name and the address that the minister had given her. He had a friend who lived in Bala, a Mr. Edwards, and he would help her. At first, the path was familiar and easy, and when the sun was up high in the sky, she stopped by a brook. She drank some fresh water and soaked her feet while she ate her lunch. After lunch, Mary set off again, but now the way seemed harder. The path was steeper and stonier. Then the path divided, and she had to remember which way her father had told her. She chose the winding path that led up the hill. Her legs were stiff and tired. She sat to rest on a stile on top of the hill, and when she looked down, to her delight, she saw the town of Bala. From somewhere, Mary found new energy and practically ran down the hill. She found Mr. Edwards' place and knocked on the door. She introduced herself and told Mr. Edwards that the minister in her village had sent her to him. She told him how she had saved up money for six years and had walked 25 miles that day to buy a Bible. Mr. Edwards was surprised and told her to join them for the meal and then she could rest and in the morning they would talk about it. Mary fell asleep wondering what it would be like to hold her own Bible. The next morning, Mr. Edwards brought Mary to Mr. Charles's place. Mr. Charles was pleased to meet Mary and was very interested in her story. He said to her, You are very fortunate. I have only one Bible left from the packet, from the parcel of Bibles that I brought home from London. He gave her the beautifully bound brand new Bible. She held it in both hands for a while. Her own Bible. She could hardly believe it. Then she gave Mr. Charles her purse full of money and tucked the Bible safely into her leather bag. Read it carefully and learn from it, said Mr. Charles. And Mary said, I will. Thank you. Mary hurried off home. The journey seemed shorter and as Mary sped over the hills, clasping her Bible. She was very tired when she saw the lamplights of her, her village. Her parents and all her friends were waiting at the edge of the village. A while after Mary had visited Mr. Charles to buy a Bible, he was thinking about how she had to save up money for so long Bibles were few and very expensive. Mr. Charles made up his mind to do something about that. A few months later, there was a meeting of some important men and women. Mr. Charles got up, went to the stage and said, Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to tell you a true story of a girl called Mary Jones. All the people listened carefully as he told them that Mary had saved money for six years and walked 25 miles all the way to Bala to buy a Bible. When he finished, the people were quiet. Then one person said, We must print more Bibles. And another person said, And make them cheaper. And then someone said, Why don't we print Bibles in every language? Right there that night, a society or organization, the Bible Society, was formed. And they started to print Bibles in in every language for people all over the world. Mr. Charles would never have imagined that today, 
200 years later, the same organization would still be at work printing Bibles. The Bible and parts of the Bible have been translated into almost 2,000 languages. In Canada, it is called the Canadian Bible Society, and they continue to collect money for printing and distributing Bibles in Canada. Is your Bible as precious to you as it was to Mary and her parents and the villagers? Mr. Charles said to her, read your Bible and learn from it. And I say, you will then be blessed. So, I think, because I have so many Bibles, that I am going to send some money to the Canadian Bible Society so that more people can have a Bible. I hope you have a very good week.